I pay respect to the First Nations of Tasmania and bring greetings from Cape York Peninsula. I'm sorry I can't be with you tonight as I've been called to sorry business at home. I did so much want to speak with you this week. I hope this format works. Let me warmly congratulate and express great admiration for what each of the two dioceses of Tasmania and Canberra Goulburn are doing for school education with insight and catalyst. Your respective commitments to the science of reading and the science of learning is exactly correct. That you represent systemic school transformation is so significant, not just for the school communities you will serve so well, but for systems across the country. You are beacons whose light will show the way for education across the nation. Many individual schools have been on the journey before you, but you are the first systems who have committed to the right path. I look at the Insight website and see the three areas of professional learning you support your schools with. Instructional leadership, tick. Science of learning based teaching practice in all classrooms, tick. Science of reading based teaching practice in all classrooms, tick. You're on the right road. You have the system leadership. You're mobilizing your school instructional leadership and you're getting your classroom teaching right with the science of reading and the science of learning. As to school education, let me paraphrase Bill Clinton, circa 1992. It's the instruction, my friend. It's the teaching and not just the teacher. It's the verb and not just the noun. I'd rather have a good teacher delivering great instruction than a great teacher delivering ineffective instruction. Siegfried Engelmann's operating principle for his direct instruction program was if the student has not learned, the teacher has not taught. If the student hasn't learned, the teacher hasn't taught. This principle is based in the core belief that every child can learn if given the right instruction. Some will need more time and more intervention and practice and some will make slower progress than others. But every child can learn. My organisation Good to Great Schools Australia, took from McKinsey and Company's landmark 2007 report their three-part identification of what great school systems around the world did in order to become successful. They ensured every child in their schools received the benefit of effective instruction. Every child. The other core belief in Engelman's principle is we possess the instructional means for every child to become a successful learner. We know what effective instruction is. The evidence on the science of reading specifically and learning generally has been growing for the past 50 years. It has also been steadfastly denied and resisted for these 50 years. Catalyst and insight give me real hope we're seeing the beginning of the breakthrough for evidence-based school education.
Catholic education, as much as public and independent, was for too long under the thrall of the half-century-long ascendancy of progressive education. Not the least, the baleful influence of Marie Clay's reading recovery. The obdurate and brook no evidence to the contrary product of a single researcher's misinterpretation of her own research evidence. The cues she identified were used by poor readers, not the best readers, as she claimed. The three cueing system of reading inspired by Clay contends for the most destructive idea in elementary education of the late 20th century. In her long and illustrious career that followed, Clay refused to acknowledge her foundational evidence was wrong. Let's just reflect on the straightforward nose-on-your-face insight from McKinsey's 2007 report on three things that make for great schools. Great teachers, delivering effective instruction to every child. McKinsey followed up in 2010 with their findings on what the world's most successful systems did to improve performance. Their fundamental insight is that the one thing that drives improvement is effective instruction. Instruction is the driver of improvement. There can be no improvement without improvement of instruction. This playbook is genius. It is still cogent and powerful today. And yet systems around Australia have failed to see what Mona Morshed and her colleagues developed here. It is all about supporting the recruitment and development of teachers so they can deliver effective instruction for every child in their schools and their systems. The interventions are context dependent and performance stage appropriate. From poor to fair to good to great to excellent. Some interventions are universal across all performance stages and other interventions are particular to each performance stage. Every system aspiring to real reform should have a map showing its leaders where in the performance spectrum their schools sit. Then they should consider the interventions needed to take their poor schools to fair, their fair schools to good, their good schools to great, and their great schools to excellent. Designation of the performance stage of their schools should be according to a proper and objective metric. We applied McKinsey's system-wide metric to our Cape York Academy, and it works. Our schools started poor, but the journey to fair happened in soon time. By Easter of the first year in our estimation. By introducing an effective instruction pedagogy and curriculum firmly based on the science of reading and the science of learning, the schools made the turnaround from poor to fair. This first phase was not without its challenges. The direct instruction program is demanding of teachers and students. Not because of the content, 
which is always within the zone of each learner's proximal development through its ingenious placement testing system. But because teaching and learning is now the main business of the classroom. It is an adjustment for classrooms to become match fit for learning. And in these first months, it is crucial to have patience and perseverance and to treat instructional time on task as precious. I want to show you the reading progression of Lane, a student from Cohen. She started with our academy in prep and is now in year seven at Columba Catholic College in Charters Towers in regional Queensland, where she is a boarder. Can I eat a nut? She said, go sit with the cow. He said, no, I will not. What's your name? Lane. What book do you have there, Lane? Great one. What grade are you in? Can you show Mr. White how well you can read your grade one story? The cow on the road. Oh, right, Lots go. of men went down the road. In a little car. So a cow was sitting on the road. So the man ran to the cow. We will let this cow, they said, but the man did not lift the cow. One day the rabbit was jumping all around and saying, ha ha, I am so fast that nobody can beat me in a race. She ran around and around, making a lot of dust flying up into the air. The other animals were mad. And what's your name? Lane. And what grade are you in? Four. And what school do you go to? Cohen. And do you enjoy school? Mm-hmm. And what's your favourite uh, thing to do at school? I love doing the whole thing in science sessions. It, the whole thing. That's good. Yes, even I like history and science. Great stuff. And there's even lots of music. reading. Even music. Even music. Because I'm a trumpet player. Oh, that's one thing I can't do. And it looks like you really enjoy reading as well. Yeah. I really enjoyed reading. The ball sailed through the air all the way down the field. The fans were standing. The wildcat stopped and turned around to watch the ball. All the titans except one turned around to watch the ball. The titan ran he ran toward the goal, and as he ran, he looked over his shoulder. The, the ball looked as if it was going to go too far. What's your name? My name's Lane. Lane? And what grade are you in, Lane? Year seven. Year seven, and how old are you? I'm 12 years old. 12 years old. What's your favourite thing about school? My favourite thing about school is where I learn new things. New things? And what school do you go to? Columbia Catholic College, Mount Carmel. Yeah, awesome. And what's your favourite subject? My favourite subject is English and religion. English and religion? 
Yep, with Miss Moy and Mrs Porter. Yes. Yeah. And what's your favourite thing about English? My favourite thing is, is where we get to write our own stories on daily challenges. Yeah. So then like when we're creating stories, we can do it in our own imaginations. Yeah, that's really fun when you're writing narratives, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So you like creative writing? Yes. Yeah? And what else do you like about English? I like it how we like to write down new stuff in our books and how we can do works and by looking at because it's just so fun. It's so fun. And what about religion? What's your most favourite thing about religion? Learning about how God uses his things in special ways. Yeah. Very nice. And what are you reading for us today? 200 Minutes of Danger. Back on the shore, the giant stormed after her, hooting and bellowing. Maria swung forwards, desperate to get out of reach. The giant stepped into the water just as Calgo had done earlier. It screamed with rage and must not have realized there was water under the layer of leaves. It toppled into the lake with a splash that created a huge wave big enough to wet Maria's dangling feet. Trying to save itself, the creature grabbed a fistful of vines in its enormous hand. With a popping creaking sound, the vine snapped under the giant's weight. The damage spread across the network of foliage, branches ripping and trunks cracking all around. This is social justice in action. A young girl from a remote community with her own home language and culture, who has been taught effectively from the beginning through direct instruction and explicit instruction. Success from the outset is so crucial. It is crucial in terms of her learning, but it is also crucial in terms of her developing her love of learning. She is one of thousands of children from remote communities whose future lives depend on schooling justice. Effective instruction is schooling justice. Effective instruction is social justice. Let me outline the basic features of direct instruction. Firstly, it was Engelman that articulated the core paradigm, which DI calls model, lead, test. First, the teacher models the learning. She then leads the students in the learning. Then she tests each of the students to ensure understanding. Anita Archer subsequently colloquialized and popularized this paradigm with I do, we do, you do. Explicit instruction is derivative of direct instruction. Secondly, Engelman and his colleagues developed instructional design principles published in his 1981 opus, Theory of Instruction. At the core of DI's instructional design is the presentation of examples to learners by the teacher, the induction of the rule exemplified in the examples, and then the generalization of the rule to novel examples. So when teaching mutualism in biology, examples are presented of the warthog and the banded mongoose, the sea anemone and the clownfish, the flying fox and the fig tree, the cassowary and the quandong tree. The rule is then identified that mutualism 
is a symbiotic relationship between two different living things where both benefit. And then this rule is applied to new examples like the Galapagos giant tortoise and the Darwin finch. Thirdly, DI programs follow tracks. Rather than teaching a body of learning in a single lesson sequence, lessons are divided into exercises, no more than 12 minutes each. Each exercise teaches a particular aspect of the learning progression. The tracks design takes into account cognitive load and is an ingenious system of incrementally progressing the learning which is designed to build towards the larger learning by teaching its constituent threads in exercises that are picked up again in the next lesson. Fourthly, DI programs are meticulously designed to enable spaced practice of the learning content. Content is revisited in a deliberate schedule to ensure content is transferred from working to long-term memory. DI was onto the curve of forgetting and the process of committing learning to long-term memory long before the cognitive science confirmed the underlying brain science. This was because Engelman and his colleagues developed their instructional design from the empirical knowledge they gained from constantly testing instruction with learners in the classroom. Fifthly, the consequence of this instructional design is that DI is about mastery learning. Every five or ten lessons, depending on the program, a mastery test is administered. Students are required to achieve 90% mastery If they do not, then reteaching is required. Lesson mastery and lesson progress become the two wings of the aeroplane of learning, which the teacher and her students must keep in balance as they fly to their next destination. Sixthly, All students are placement tested for each program prior to commencement. These tests are highly accurate and help place learners in their correct zone of proximal development. This is where Engelman meets Vygotsky. Students are grouped into ability groups which attend to the need for differentiation. This is the scientific approach to differentiation. Differentiation in DI is based on the administration of placement tests, which are formative tests, and learners are grouped according to where they are at with their learning. Ability grouping is in fact a misnomer. This is not about innate ability or aptitude. It is about where the learner is currently at with their learning. Finally, BI programs are scripted. This is the one thing everyone knows about DI. My experience is very few people who are allergic to DI 
have ever seen it in practice in the classroom and know the instructional design features I have outlined here. The only thing they know and are resistant to is the infamous script. Pulling together the curriculum elements of scope and sequence of learning and content knowledge with the pedagogical elements of effective instruction, spaced practice and mastery learning schedules would be impossible without a script. The instructional design is highly sophisticated and complex. The classroom teacher would need to do what Engelman developed and tested over 50 years to come up with spelling mastery. The script attends to one crucial element of effective teaching, the necessity for clarity of communication. The fundamental importance of clarity and parsimony of wording was Engelman's first insight into effective teaching. What may be a looseness of articulation that is a small puddle to a mature learner can be an ocean of confoundment to the novice learner. My advice to those seeking to implement the science of reading based on the science of learning into their classroom and school is to use direct instruction or multi-lit in early primary years from K level to year three at least. The difference in the learning to read phase of these programs and other more freestyle approaches to explicit instruction is large. Engelman once said, not all spotty dogs are Dalmatians. Just because a reading program includes phonics does not by itself make it accord with the science of reading. My organisation, Good to Great Schools Australia, is dedicated to supporting Australian schools with the professional learning required to successfully implement direct instruction. In addition to the published DI programs, we have developed our own curricula following direct and explicit instruction pedagogy. We now have a comprehensive P to six science program based on explicit instruction, not on inquiry learning. We came to see the difference between scientific inquiry and inquiry learning. The scientific method is crucial for students to learn, but inquiry learning is a teaching fallacy. The conflation of the two things is a grave error. Rather, our science program explicitly teaches scientific knowledge. We are developing and offer similar programs in writing and music, all of which we offer online through our website. Our genre-based writing program integrates Hass knowledge in geography, civics, economics and business, and history. We have also developed Australian supplements to the Connecting Maths Concepts DI program and mapped all DI programs to the Australian curriculum. 
We provide all of our professional learning and curriculum programs free to teachers and schools. We revise the programs based on classroom feedback. We offer trial membership to individual teachers, which we then convert to school partnerships where schools wish to have access to all of our teaching and training resources. I invite you to browse our website and have a look at our resources. In closing, let me wish you all the best. I hope this week's conference inspires all of you on your exciting journey ahead. Thank you.